Wednesdays and Sundays is not enough. I promise you, you're going to get an overdrive if all you depended on is Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, my God. But Acts chapter 2, starting at verse number 42. When you have it, please say amen. And the word of God reads, all the believers devoted. Mm, that's powerful right there. Devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. So you have all of the disciples, the apostles, they was devoted to, the, to, 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 to teaching, fellowship, sharing of the Lord's Supper, and prayer. And the Bible says in verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, many miraculous signs and wonders. And all of the believers met together, church, in one place like we're doing tonight and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Oh, my God. They worshiped, verse 46, they worshiped together at the temple each day. We, we can't even make it to church two days. They worship every day. My God. Uh, they worship together at the temple each day and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They was breaking bread and partaking of the Lord's Supper every single day and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47 says, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E and each day the Lord added, boy, he couldn't do nothing but bless that, added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Father God, I thank you for the reading of your holy, precious word. Father God, we handle your presence with awe and reverence. We honor you tonight inside of going hard for Christ Church. Lord, I pray that you speak in the house and speak to those that are listening by way of social media, Father God. I pray that you save somebody. I encourage somebody soul tonight, Father God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in God's presence. As I stated earlier, where I was reading the one you're reading uh, last week or so, but also I want to read this. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, On the day of Pentecost... All the believers were meeting together in one place. And of course, we understand suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like roar, like a roaring and mighty windstorm. When the people come together and are unified, there's a sound. Yeah. See, don't you know, it can be a lot of noise in an atmosphere. But the word of God says those of God hear it, the things of God. So even in the midst of all of the noise, when you have an ear, for the spirit, when your spirit is alive, when your spirit is vibrant, oh my God, Lord, when you've been spending time with the Lord, you can catch God in the midst of a whole lot of noise. You can go out to the state fair where they got all this noise and all this stuff going on, and God will speak in the midst of all of that noise. My God, keep think about what I just said. You could be at the state fair, and it could be all type of noise. Uh, when your spirit is vibing, when your spirit is alive, God will speak to you in the midst of all of the noise, and you will be able to pull, my God, and hear what God is saying and is saying to you in the midst of the noise. So I want you to understand, just because you hear a lot of noise, and a whole lot of excitement. And when the atmosphere, my God, is real expressive and real jubilistic per se, uh, that don't always mean that God is there. Uh, the Bible says, my God, and I believe that's in Ezekiel, or one of the, uh, God wasn't in the wind. God wasn't in the storm. God wasn't in the rain. God wasn't in the fire. My God, uh, we tend to look for God in the, big, in the noise. God is not always in the noise. That's why it's good to find a little place over in that corner. Doing six o'clock prayer, get a place back there in that corner. I get down, my God, and cover your head up with a with a with a with a with a, with a, with a cover, my God, so you can focus in on God's voice. That's why it's good to 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 to, to back up, reposition yourself, and back away from the people, my God, that's doing all the talking. Uh, 
we don't mean to offend nobody, but when God is still working after we have given a benediction and, and people are still at the altar, Minister Jackie, and, and praying and God is still moving, uh, we don't want you to begin to talk and all that because it could be a distraction. Oh, my God, the enemy uses, my God, distractions, my God, to rob a person from hearing God's voice. Sometimes, I just want to let you know, sometimes, matter of fact, a lot of times, God don't necessarily show up during the service. He show up after everybody leaves. That's why it's always good when we call, oh my God, to learn how to sit, my God, in that lingering anointing. After everybody in the left, my God, then there's five or ten people, and that's when God starts speaking. See, what you and I got to be careful of, my God, as soon as I give the benediction, as soon as you let the fleshly time get your attention, you out the door, my God. Because you so, my God, moved by the five senses, moved by your stomach. You got a set routine that you got to get home to get the kids in bed or whatever so you can watch a show or whatever. And, and you walk right out. And when you walk right out, the Spirit of God show right up. And if everything that you needed, my God, you walk right out on it and God walk right in. That's good training. Learn how to sit. Don't be so much in a hurry. I've been teaching y'all, my God, for six years how the enemy will speed you up. He will speed you up. He'll speed your mind up. You got to be disciplined, my God, to tell your mind to submit. Paul said, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself. My God, the great John Maxwell said, one of the hardest persons to lead is self. We can lead everybody else, but we can't lead our Self, or when you master leading yourself, I promise you, life will take on a whole new meaning. When you be as hard on yourself as you are somebody else, then you'll see life take on a whole new meaning. I'm gonna say that again. When you can be as hard on yourself as you are somebody else, when they make a mistake, life will take on a whole new meaning. Are you with me so far? So, a dynamic atmosphere, a dynamic atmosphere, my God, uh, of a strategic church isn't built. By the lighting. Mm, it's always good to have good lighting, but that ain't the atmosphere that God looks for. You may even have good sound and decor, but that ain't what God is coming out there. That ain't what God is looking for. These things are important. It's good to have good lighting, good to have good sound, good to have a decor set and have your church stage right and so forth. That's beautiful. My God, order is everything, my God, but that ain't what God is after of in your life. Are y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. yeah. However, the atmosphere, my God, when you have uh, good decor, good lighting, and good sound, it, it can help, my God, create a dynamic, a dynamic atmosphere. It can help create, my God, an atmosphere that's inviting. I need every last one of you to understand that, my God, the spirit of the living God will not just show up in any atmosphere. You have to invite the spirit of God into your atmosphere. You have to create an atmosphere that's welcoming for the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit ain't coming where it's chaos. My God, my God, we understand the Old Testament. He showed up in the, the church with, today. It's called the temple. But guess what? You got to create the atmosphere in your physical temple. I'm going somewhere. I promise you, my God, for the Holy Spirit to live. What did the word of God say? I would not live, dwell in an unclean temple. Are y'all with me so far? Atmosphere means everything. When the atmosphere is right, according to the Acts of the Apostles, my God, God begins to do signs, miracles, and wonders. You begin to see things change. You begin to see things die. You begin to see things shift, my God. Come on, you begin to see change broken up of your life when the atmosphere in the church as well as in your mind is right. Are y'all with me so far? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so however the atmosphere is created for first in the spiritual realm, you create the proper atmosphere and set yourself up naturally, but you do that first spiritually. Because before anything ever manifests naturally, you got to first manifest spiritually. See, what I said, you got to learn how to pull down from heaven what you need in the natural. Come on, somebody, but you got to create an atmosphere spiritually. Come on, somebody. That means that you just can't be all over the place. Uh, yeah, 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 you need to be rightly aligned, as I talked to me in this past Monday, with God. My God, come on, somebody. You got to be able to pull down from the spiritual realm what you need to manifest in the natural realm. Are y'all with me? Pull down what you need from the spiritual realm. Everything that you need to live a successful, godly life is in the spiritual realm. But you got to be able to pull it down. And guess how you pull it down? Not just doing outward pulling by faith. What you need, you're going to have to pull it from the spiritual realm by faith. Somebody write that down. Pull it down by faith. Oh, my God, that'll preach right there. Pull it down by faith. 
Oh, my God, you can do all this pulling like I'm doing right now, all this external motion, all this external moving, and don't be doing nothing but just exercising. And everything that you need is still up in heaven because you did all this moving, but you didn't pull it down by faith. Uh, oh, my God, it takes faith to move God. It takes faith to also please God. It takes faith to move a mountain. It takes faith to walk in healing. It takes faith to walk in deliverance. It takes faith, my God, to conquer what's conquering you. Everything is done by faith, baby. You and I got to understand that faith, my God, many of us is trying to serve God. We're not serving God by faith. We're serving God by substance. What we feel like we can accomplish. Our substance. We presented our substance, our strength, our will to God. God said, I can't do nothing with that. I can't do nothing with that. I can't do nothing with that. So the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm, my God. My God, things happen in the spiritual realm. First, mm. Principles are learned, to, principles are practiced when you first learn how to operate in the spiritual realm. Principles are learned and practiced, my God, when you learn how to pull and operate from the spiritual realm. I'm going to show you where I'm going with that. Also, power, my God, is manifested in a person's life. So if I'm pulling down from the spirit, my God, and I'm learning how to operate in the spiritual realm, my God, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement that in my life. And when I begin to walk in the principles and the promise of God, and then, my God, my temple, my God, is getting clean and sanctified, then I have the power. See, it's a, it's a pattern. Because your spirit, live, and then power comes. Spirit, live it, practice, and then power begins to come. Why do I say that, my God? Because God cannot and will not set, my God. The Bible said the spirit of God set upon Christ. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is set upon Christ. Come on, somebody. You got to ask yourself, is God setting upon me? See, it's one thing for him to set upon you, but you got to take that further. You don't want God just to set upon you. Set on top of you, you want God to endure, empower you, endure you with power. Power helps you say no in the midnight hour. Power will keep you from, oh my God, power, my God, will keep you, keep you living right. Power, my God, will, will make you be obedient. Power will make you close your mouth when you want to go off on somebody. Power will make you forgive somebody. Power will let you, like the woman of God prophesied, make you let it go. Power. Many people don't got no power. Because the Spirit of God won't live in an unclean temple. So we have many powerless Christians all across the nation. Full of scripture, but no power. Because in order, oh my God, in order, my God, for the power to manifest in our physical lives, it got to be walked out. That means lifestyle. You can quote it all day long, but can you walk it out? And when you begin to walk out the promises, when you begin to walk out the word, because the word is already powerful in itself. My God, you mix, my God, the word that's already powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, you mix that with obedience. Oh, my God, the word of God says obedience is better than the sacrifice. When you begin to mix, my God, the power of the word with a lifestyle that God gives you supernatural power, you can overcome all kind of stuff. My God, that's why Peter didn't walk, my God, and people was healed by their shadow. They laid handkerchiefs down in the front and the ground and people was healed by their handkerchief because they walked in the power lifestyle pulling from the spiritual realm practicing I should have put lifestyle leads to power my God one accord you need to be on one accord with the Holy Ghost you can't be out of alignment with the Holy Ghost and think you're going to have power you got to align. We got to align us that's why I tell you my God when you walk with God you got to bring your flesh under submission to your spirit your flesh, when we get saved, our flesh is on top. But when you get saved, it should reverse where the spirit come on top and you bring your flesh under submission to your spirit. Your flesh, everybody got to train their flesh to obey God. Are you with me so far? We got to get in alignment. Too many Christians are out of alignment. That's why we have no power. That's why we always defeated in many areas. We do good for one week and then we mess up the next three weeks. No power. Power will sustain you, church. I'm trying to teach y'all tonight. Power will sustain you. In order to get that power and walk in that power, my God, you got to live something. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. My God. Mm. We all carry the atmosphere. I'm going to. I'm just in an introduction. Shemaine, I feel good. Uh, we carry an atmosphere. Don't you know you and I carry a certain type of atmosphere? Yeah. Everywhere you go, you're carrying and giving off <laughs> some type of atmosphere, some type of aroma. Uh -huh. Are you with me so far? So let's, let me show you what we, get, what we give off. My God. So we all carry an atmosphere. This is good. Whether it's anger, pride, come on, some bitterness, 
unforgiveness. That's an atmosphere. Because let me help you with something. When you squeeze something, whatever's on the inside got to come out, baby. When you bump up to something, my God, if you rub up against some urn, shopping urn, so whatever's on the inside, oh, my God, my God, that's what's going to come out. So it don't matter how much we sit in churches. It don't matter how much scripture, my God, because in the, I had to repent. I had to deal with a situation on, uh, uh, I think that was Monday or Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, whenever a uh, situation, my God, and, and I had to ask God to forgive me. Because I gave off the, the wrong uh, aroma. I gave off the former juju, my God, that didn't know Christ, that stood H. Deuce, my God, with his head cocked to the right. I went back to my thug ways, and I had to ask God to forgive me, my God, because I felt like he was crossing and disrespecting and dishonoring something that God blessed me with on his campus, and so therefore, here I come. But I came in the flesh. I didn't come in the spirit, so I had to ask him and God to forgive me. Because sometimes you don't always give off the right aroma. Oh, but he crossed my manhood and made me feel like Don Don did. I was a coward, so you can't do that because I ain't there. Don't catch Christ gone. I'm not there. But that don't, but that, 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 that don't justify, that don't justify, my God, pastor, people, juju, that you get to act like that. Yeah, it's right, but you can't uh, mishandle and disrespect what God blessed me with. I pay the price to stand over here, and if you don't honor it, then you got to get up out of here. If you don't appreciate what God has done over here, you ain't finna be here. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Oh, my God, because I pay the price to stand up in this pool pit. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. And so I missed it. I missed it, Jack. I, I true. I gave off the, the anger, but he called Christ. He didn't catch him going. He just he crossed me. And I'm not gonna justify it. I'm just gonna keep it on a dollar. So I had to repent to him and to God. So I'm saying you don't always give off the right aroma, but when you recognize you're not giving off the right aroma, you got to be willing to do something different. You got to be willing to own what you messed up. Because that was a test that I think I might have would have failed. Because I should have showed more love and more patience. Come on, somebody. And so here's another Roman. When you give out faith, atmosphere, faith, kindness, and love, those three I didn't do. I didn't get those three. See what I'm trying to say? But I thank God that he woke me up and gave me an opportunity to make right what I made wrong. Our homes. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. Our homes. Our homes also carry an atmosphere. Uh, so what kind of atmosphere are you living in when you are not at church? Today, we will discuss the three layers of building a dynamic atmosphere. So the title of this message is Changing Your Atmosphere. Why do you and I need to change the atmosphere? Because we need God's spirit to cohabitate with us. We need God's spirit to come and fill, and fill us with power. And when we are walking in God's power, we have signs, miracles, and wonders. Things begin to shift. Doors begin to open. When you show up, you ain't got to turn the knob. It automatically open up for you. My God. Oh, my God. You can walk in so much power, as I told y'all, my God. Oh, God will give you favor when you walk in power, my God. When you are striving to please God, God will do the supernatural in your life. My God, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has in store. Listen to me. Eyes, your natural eyes have not seen, our natural ears have not even heard, and neither have it entered in our mind. We couldn't even conceive. Oh, my God, the things that God has in store for you. Think about that. Your eyes, your ears, neither have you even imagined what God has in store for you. God got so much in store for you. My God. And, and, and hearing that scripture, Ephesians, my God, and all that, my God, you should, you, should, you, you should be like, man, I got to find out what God got in store for me. If he got all this, my God, I just need God. I don't know about y'all, but I need God to continue to blow my mind. I need God to continue, my God, to make me say, ah, I just couldn't, ah. Just when I counted you out, God, my God, you showed up again. Just when I thought you couldn't do no more, my God, you parted the Red Sea in my life. Just when I thought you couldn't do it, you healed her, healed, healed, saved, healed. Some of y'all need to put God, my God, allow God to do something to blow your mind. God is still writing your book. Oh, my God, it looks so bad. Sometimes God got to let stuff get so bad before he step in and say, peace, ah, be still. Uh, he'll create an atmosphere, my God. He'll send a tsunami, my God. You think he didn't, oh, he had to turn it all down and build it back up overnight. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Y'all better, better quit handcuffing God. Y'all better give God something to work with. And God only works with faith. My God, that's what God works with. He don't work with flesh. Give God something to work with. You need a storm so you can see God move. You need God to create something so he can see God moving. Some of y'all faith ain't strong enough. That's why God got to create a storm so he can show you and speak to you in the midst of the storm. 
Oh yeah, you need some tight places. Oh, you need some things not to go right for you. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, you need some hard times, my God, because that's what God begin to move at. Oh, God, my God, God does his greatest work in the valley. He don't do his greatest work on the mountains it's in the valley. The tough times, the times you don't want to know what's going on. When you're about to lose your mind, you ready to quit and tap out. That's where God to step in. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. For some of y'all, God is trying to build your faith. Quit fainting in the midst of the storm and trials. Even the self-inflicted trials. Even the stuff that we bring on ourselves. That's where we, when you walk in God's authority, we make mistakes. We walk in God's power, we make mistakes. And that's where we can say all things are working together for the good to those that love God. God will turn around even our own mistakes. That's how loving and caring God is. Mm. So point number one, let's put that on the screen. Uh, the atmosphere opened up the heavens. Uh, the right atmosphere will open up the heavens. Too many of our lives, the heavens is closed above our heads. That's why the relationship seems like we ain't making no headway. When we pray, my God, we, 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 don't, we, we don't we don't we don't come out refreshed and revived and recharged. It, it seems like everything is a drudgery, everything is hard. It seems like my God, uh, uh, it's, it's 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 a desert in our prayer life. That's why many don't make it to 6 o'clock prayer, even if you can't get here to 6.30, my God, because you don't believe prayer work. But I promise you, the only reason why you are here today, because somebody was praying for you. If we as a body of Christ all around the nation, especially at 205 South Sheridan, believe that prayer work like we talk about it, ain't no way in the world we should have 50 people at prayer on six, at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday. Many people that attend this ministry, my God, there's no way possible you should have 40, 50 people at prayer. If you really believe, even if, don't you know, five minutes of laser-focused prayer can change your whole destiny? Five minutes of just laser-focused prayer and God speak and God gives you a strategic plan, a strategic weapon, a strategic move. Oh, my God, my God, God can speak in five minutes. He can do more in five minutes than he can in one hour. I can't get nobody to say That's what I'm saying. You be limiting God. Oh, I don't need to be going to prayer if I can't get there at 6 o'clock. Oh, I don't want to go to prayer at 6.15. I don't want anybody looking at me. See, you're disqualifying yourself. Yeah. Many of you could be at prayer, but you don't. It's lazy. Yeah. You don't believe that prayer work. Because if you did, you would be here. Yeah. If your life depended on you getting to prayer, you would be here every day. You open up every day. I open the church every day, you'd be here. If you knew that the only way God was going to turn it around was through prayer, you would make, you would make me open this church up at 12 o'clock noon every single day. It would be a priority if you believed that prayer worked in your life. All the stuff, my God, that you don't want to let go, all those chains, my God, the woman of God prophesied about, if you believed that God would break those chains in prayer, you would be at prayer. So what am I trying to say? The reason why the heavens is cold because many of us don't believe. We really don't believe like we say. They wash me with their mouth, but their heart be far from me. Because if you believe, actions will follow belief. Actions will follow real belief. I can't get nobody to say Lifestyle will follow real belief. And when your lifestyle is following real belief, you're going to have some power to resist the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Mm. Yes, Lord. So the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens. No spiritual hindrances are allowed in this layer. When the heavens is open, no spiritual hindrances. Hindrance is loud in its layer. The heavens, the open heavens idea is an idea that speaks of a spiritual flow. Oh my God, there's a flow in the spiritual realm, I promise you. And power, oh my God, the flow of the spirit and power uh, uh, is easily to receive. Oh, my God, when there's a flow, when there's a proper connectivity. That's why the Bible says in the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, 1 through 5, he said, I'm the vine and you are the branch. He said, remain in me, stay connected to me, abide in me, my God, and then you will produce fruit, my God. But you can't have that power and you won't have that spiritual flow if you plug in and then unplug. Plug in and then unplug. Read sometime and then stop reading, my God. You hinder the heavens from being open. I'm trying to help you understand there's a flow. And you and I, I and you, need to keep the heavens open. And can I help you? Without repentance, the heavens will stay closed. Habitual sins will close the heavens. Bitterness and unforgiveness will keep the heavens closed above your heads. Come on, my God. When you make a mistake like I did the other day, my God, and you don't repent, my God, the heavens will be closed. If I had not repented to him and God, my God, I'd disqualify myself to stand before y'all and preach the gospel. It's just that, it's just that serious. See, you just can't live any kind of way and stand before the people of God and think that it's okay. You got to put a mandate. Like I said, one of the hardest person to lead is yourself. 
And so you got to ask yourself, is the heavens open? When I go to pray, my God, do, do I feel any refreshing when I get through? Do I feel like I made some headway? Do I got a flow? Do I got a cleansing? Oh, my God, many of us pray and we, sit and we go in dirty and we come out feeling dirty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we go in with guilt and shame and we come out with guilt and shame. You know why? Because we don't really believe what we're asking God to do. If you believe God going to forgive you, then you got to accept. That's a mindset what God is, what you're asking God to forgive you for. Some of the hardest things that we do, we don't forgive ourselves. Yeah. We'll forgive somebody else, but they won't forgive ourselves. Right. But we in prayer, even at 6 o'clock, and when we get up, we still ain't forgave ourselves. Yeah. We didn't ask God to forgive us for everything else we done done, but why not forgive yourself? So you got to understand that you got to create, my God, the heavens. You got to create an atmosphere, my God, to have a spiritual flow from heaven. You want your heavens to be open. What I'm trying to teach you, my God, that the spirit of God will not just show up in any type of atmosphere. Atmosphere in the physical temple of the church, but also atmosphere in your physical temple in your life. You can't be full of wickedness and bitterness. That's why Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees, you wicked fool. You, he said, you sons of the devil, my God. He said, you are wolves and sheep clothing, my God. You are wicked, my God. That's unhealthy. Come on, somebody. He was talking to the religious folks. Jesus said, you was wolves and sheep clothing. Inside, my God, you was full of the devil. Oh, my God. God rebuked them. Oh, don't let God rebuke us. Don't let God rebuke us, my God, because we walk around with... She clothing on, but inside we are wolves. We devour. We devour. We eat up people. We talk about people. We gossip. Uh, we lie on people. Uh, come on, we criticize and judge and all of those type of stuff. See, see we do the same thing as the Pharisee. When we talk about somebody, we lie on them. When we tell them lies, assassinating people's character, not giving people a pass, holding people in unforgiveness, that closes the heavens, church. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, and then when we go home, uh, the only time some of us have peace is for the hour and a half we at church. When we go home, it's a war zone. It's a war zone. Kids then set us off. Come on, somebody. Oh, don't you know the Bible says as soon as the word of God is sown into a man's heart, the devil comes and snatch it away. Oh, my God. As soon as you hear a word, you charge up, you ready to go. My God, you go home and the kids start tripping. See, I say, now you all focus on what the kids is doing. You done went off, cussed them out and everything, and the enemy just stole the word that he planted in your soul. God, that quick. That's why the Bible says you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart in order for the heavens to be open. You got to guard. You got to wage war with your flesh, baby. There's a war going on with you and I. Come on, somebody. And so you got to keep the heavens open so you can have a spiritual flow. You got to create an atmosphere in your physical temple where the power of God can live on the inside of you. Oh, my God, well, you can say no to the flesh. Well, you can conquer things. You can accomplish that. God has things in store for you. God has great plans and dreams. Come on. Broken crayons still work in color. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. God wants to use you even in your brokenness. I talked to you that two weeks ago when Job was broke down and broken pottery. All of he used it to scrape himself. God can still use broken people. All of us is broken, including the one preaching the gospel. Including the one preaching the gospel. We all broken. So you got to begin to make some decisions to keep the heavens open, my God, above your head. Open heavens are gained by spiritual unity. Write that word down. Unity. Don't you know I'm not just talking about the unity, my God, amongst us. How about unity amongst yourself? Some of us at war with our own self. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, that unity, my God, what I was talking about is for us, but God just showed me some of us don't even have no unity with self. I know what that's like because I was at war with myself before I came to know God. But you got to get some unity with yourself. When you know you are out of balance with your own self, you waging war against your own self. And so the devil always said, I ain't got to worry about pleasure. She waging war against her own self. I ain't got to worry about LaQuita. She, going, she fighting against her own self. I ain't got to worry about Elisa. She fighting against her own self. You are no longer a threat to the enemy when you waging war against your own self. Now, there is such thing, let me balance this out, to wage war against the flesh because you're trying to conquer and kill and crucify the flesh. That's a war you're supposed to be waging war. But when you're at war with yourself, meaning you can't forgive yourself, you can't accept that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you can't accept that you're created in God's image, you can't accept that when you accepted Christ, my God, he washed away and forgave you of your past. You got to begin to accept that stuff. If you don't, you'll bring your past into your future and you'll be at war with your past and future. I can't get nobody saying that right there. Many of us are in war with the past and the future. God trying to move you to your future, but you bring your past in there because you won't let it go. You're in war with your past because you let people, my God, bring up your past because you keep hanging around those people that don't want you to soar. You got to clip, 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 clip people that's always bringing up your past. 
Oh, that was heavy. That wasn't even in my nose, Jack. We had war with our past and present. And nine out of ten times, if you ain't spending time with God, you're not in unity with the Spirit, and the heavens ain't open, you and I are losing. Let me move a little farther. Is this helping anybody so far? Come on, am I helping anybody? Let me show you, let me give you another example, because many people love how I make it plain. When God has told you to do something, simple as this one word that the church is for, when God say forgive, and we wrestle with that, you're at war. Sometimes we are waging war not just with ourselves, even with God. And that's a dangerous place to be in. You and I, I and you will never win. When God has told you to do something, made it clean, I mean pure. He laid it out there. You know there was God. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Because anytime God asks you to do something, it's going to always move you and advance you and advance his kingdom. Let me say it again because you see, see, you got to come up. Anytime the spirit of the living God asks you to do something, it's going to always move you and his kingdom forward. God will never tell you to do something that's going to keep you stagnant. He's always pushing you. The kingdom of heaven is always forcefully advancing. That's Bible. So many times the devil, the devil don't want you to make decisions that's going to move you and the kingdom forward. He wants the kingdom to be stagnant. But the kingdom can't be stagnant. There ain't no neutral in God, y'all. Quit trying to, you, you, this ain't in God. Let me get up here so y'all can see this, man. This ain't in God. It ain't none of this in God. You can't stand like this in God. Either you with God, either you not with God. Either you fuck God or against God. That's what Jesus said. Ain't no neutral. You can't stand in two ways, baby. You can't be double-minded and double-souled and think the heaven's going to be open over your head. You got to solidify. You got to be like Paul. I'm persuaded. My God, that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Come on, you got to have your mind made up and your heart fixed that you're going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. You can't be torn between two opinions. Either you're on God's side or you ain't on God's side. You can't be on God's side on Wednesday for an hour and Sunday for two hours. Either you're with God on Monday or you ain't with him at all on Sunday. Mm, when you're not locked in, my God, you keep the heavens closed. Prayer, write the word prayer on fasting down. Let me move quickly. My God, my God, you gain, my God, the heavens be open when you have unity, prayer, and fasting. A fresh outpouring of God's spirit will fall on you. Oh, my God, you gain from the spirit realm. Unity, prayer, and fasting opens up the heavens, Jackie, and it's a fresh outpouring. It's a fresh outpouring, Laquetta. The fresh outpouring when you're praying, when you're fasting, and when you're you, when you unified with God. That means when you're in right standing with God. Righteousness is a legal term. It's a kingdom word, but it's, it's a legal term in the natural. My God means right standing. We should strive to be in right standing with God. Can I help you? Y'all know coming here don't mean you're in right standing with God. Coming down here, my God, and saying a sinner's prayer don't mean you're in right standing with God. It will show up when you live what you just confess. When you practice, see, God know if we're practicing or if we're playing. God know if we're practicing or are we playing. God knows if we're practicing or are playing. God wills to bless you. Eyes have not seen, I told y'all. God has good things in store for those that love him. Unity, prayer, and fasting. Come on, somebody, opens the atmosphere of heaven. I need heaven to be open. Psalm 63, 1 through 2 says, you, God, are my God. Earnestly, David said, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs, my God. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary, and behold your power and your glory. David said, I didn't see your spirit manifest. I didn't see your power. I didn't see your glory. Oh, the glory would fill the physical temple, my God, and the natural. They said, my God, the glory was so thick in the temple where the people couldn't do no service in the temple. All they did is bow down and worship. There wasn't no greeters, there wasn't no porters, there wasn't no running no cameras, there wasn't no preaching. Oh, when the glory of God show up and the power of God show up, that means holiness in the kingdom. My God, you can't do nothing but honor God. When the power will come up, you just bow in his presence. You can't move when the glory fills the temple. The Bible said they could do no service, they could do no work. All they did is lay out in the presence of the living God. And we didn't see those type of movements in this church from 34, even over here. My God, would the spirit of God be so thick, I step up in this pool pit to preach the gospel and move forward, and all we do is end up worshiping God. That's the Shekinah glory. Uh, my God, I don't let the noise distract me. 
I don't let the screaming and shouting, the screaming and shouting distract me. See, I'm trying to say, you step in the pool pit, my God. That's why sometimes I be trying to transition to transition to service, my God. And when I step up and try to mess with the Spirit of God, like it push me back out the way. Uh, when I get ready to say something, my God, God, yank me back, my God. Don't touch it, son. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. It's glory, especially when you see the people pushing, pushing the atmosphere. Moving, my God, people getting dealt with, my God, screaming, my God, people moving, people crying out, people falling out, people moving to the altar, people coming down, just falling down, people standing up in the corners with their head to the wall, stuff like that. God is moving, his glory didn't hit the temple. Many people run from that. Many churches, my God, if you, they, that level of glory hit the church, the people say we would. If I took y'all to some of these churches and turned our worship loose, and we worship and honor God like we do, they, will, they won't invite us back. They be like, them people is crazy. They too radical. But they don't understand our story. They don't understand when you have tasted the goodness of the Lord. They don't know that when you have seen God move. <laughs> oh, my God, they don't know, my God, that when, you, when the heavens is open over your life, when you got a vibe and relationship, my God, you move different, you function different, my God. You can't sit still like I did when I went to that church with Pastor Chell. My God, the Spirit of God was so thick in that church, I won't call his name, and they got good praise and worship, beautiful sound system, beautiful sanctuary, lights, camera, decor. They had all that going on, all that in this church. And this, the, the choir was blowing. I'm talking about blowing, blowing. They was moving. And so, man, I got up. I was sitting right in, the, in three, four rows. Told Pastor Chump and Mario, get out of my way. Y'all know me. What? Nobody. I'm talking about the spirit of God was so thick. Alisa in the church. The choir was blowing. And nobody was worshiping. They were sitting down just like y'all. And I'm thinking, ooh, I'm rocking. I'm moving. I said, ooh, my God. I got up. And I told him, excuse me. And I went. I'm a first time guest. And they up there blowing. I'm going somewhere, and they blowing. And of course, you know, uh, 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 what I'm doing is not what they're accustomed to. So I'm up here, and they blowing, and I'm worshiping, and they start blowing harder. And, and, and the man of God look down at me because it's the pew, the thing sits so high. He look down at me, and I'm pushing, and I'm worshiping, I'm rolling, and I'm loud, and I'm screaming. And he just start going, and they start going, and they start going. Then I was bent over, start hitting the pool pit. Bam, 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 bam. bam. And they, and they start pushing, and they start pushing, and they start pushing. And then I look back, my God, they start standing up in pockets. They start, I push, my God, with the power. I push the atmosphere. I change the atmosphere. Just on my walk up alone, baby. I went into a church and push and change the atmosphere. And then they start standing up and they start praising. And the choir was just saying it. And they were saying it. And they were saying it. You got the power to change an atmosphere. I push a thousand member church by myself and worship. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Hey! Oh, Jesus. Pushed it by myself. Thousand people in that church and I pushed it all by myself in the spirit because I was willing to get out of my comfort zone. I wasn't going to let the people cause me not to worship God. Oh my God. I stood up and gave God all of the glory. I don't care if you don't like it. I ain't never got to come back. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost, for reminding me of that. You have, to, you have the power when you properly connected to God to change an atmosphere. Oh, I wish I could call the name. Many of you probably come from the church. Beautiful choir, beautiful decor, beautiful everything. Music is beautiful. Band and praise and worship is gifted. Everybody sitting down like God ain't done nothing. I said, the devil is alive. Oh my God. Yes, Lord, pushed it. Boy, I pushed it. I give God the glory. Not by my might, nor by my power, by his spirit, said the Lord. You got to change the atmosphere. Oh, I'm going to do this one more point and get you out of here. I ain't going to mess with the last one. But I need you to understand that you have the power to change the atmosphere. If you don't like that what's going on in your home, change it. Shift your mind. Let go of the bitterness. Let go of the anger. Let go of the frustration. If you're tired, disconnect from the chain. You're tired of pulling the truck, then clip the chain, my God. You have the power to change the atmosphere. You don't have to just accept a negative atmosphere. My God, some of our homes is like Vietnam. Walking around on explosives. Soon you make the wrong step, bam. If you say something too loud, he throwing stuff at you. Oh my God, if you slept the kids, slept the door. Quit making out of the door. Some of y'all laying up with me that just angry and bitter. You a prisoner in your own home. Change your atmosphere. Tell him to get it. Line up, I get up out of here. 
This is my house. You got to go. You ain't gonna take over my house. Get up out of here. Quit letting me just dominate y'all like this. Change the atmosphere in your home. Let your babies go up in all that mess. Walking around like pins and needles in your own home. You paying the bills. He driving your car and all that. The devil is alive. Ain't you tired? A prisoner in your own home. But you in church every Sunday and every Wednesday and he laughing at you. The devil is alive. Walk in your power. Walk in your godly authority. Oh my God. Power has nothing to do with volume. Power has everything to do with your connection to God. Yes, Lord. Let's look at number two and get you out of here. My God, so if you want the heavens to be open, you got to have some unity. You got to have some prayer, some fasting personally in your life. And number two, an atmosphere of unified expectancy. I'm going to close with this. Unified expectancy. Ministers at least always have said you got to have an expectation. When you come to church on Wednesday, when you come to men's and women's discipleship, when you come to church on Sunday, when you open up your Bible, when you get on your knees in prayer, when you come to 6 o'clock prayer, when you come to Kingdom Foundation, you got to come into the house of the Lord with an expectancy. What are you coming? What are you expecting in God to do? You telling God all of your needs. He know I already know your needs and my needs. But are you expecting him to do something about it? Are you giving God something to work with, my God, concerning your needs? God know what your needs is like you know what mine is. He know what you need, but are you expecting him to do it? Do you believe enough for him to do it? We talking about creating an atmosphere. Create, change the atmosphere. If, if your atmosphere in your physical life, my God, is not inviting to the Holy Ghost, you are disqualifying yourself because there's so much anger and bitterness in your temple, so much disobedience, so much sin in your life. You got to change that. You got to change that. You can't just accept that. And many of us come to church to clear our fleshly conscience, but we don't come with an expectancy. Are you expecting? Boy, every time I pray, I'm expecting God to move. Oh, my God. God promised me in the book of Acts. He said, if I confess with my mouth and believe within my heart, I shall be saved in my whole household. I'm standing on household salvation. I'm expecting God to deliver my son. I'm expecting God to save my son. No matter how long it takes, I'm going to stand in faith. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Are you expecting God to fix your marriage? Are you expecting God to heal your children? Oh my God, what are you expecting from God? Christians? You got to have an expectancy, baby. You got to have an expectancy. And when you got an expectancy, expectancy, my God, you create an atmosphere for the spirit of God to come. You say, come Holy Ghost. You're welcome Holy Ghost. All that you are, come and do what you will in my life. Mm, my God. Oh, my God, I got to get you out of here. Unified, unified expectancy is, is, is anticipating. Oh, my God. Unified expectancy is, is, is an anticipation that the greatness and the goodness of God will work in your life and God's will. See, when you have a unified expectancy, you, you, you got to expect. You got to expect. Boy, the devil is alive. Give me that, give me that mic. Oh my God. Somebody that's torment the devil. He can't do me like that. Get on your feet and torment the devil. Come on, going off of Christ Church. I'm gonna finish this. I somebody got a word coming. Don't let the enemy rob you of your word. Do you got an expectation? Are you expecting God to do something? Come on, church. Come on, church. Make the devil back up. Make all distractions back up. The devil, you gotta let go of my word. My pastor's pregnant with something I need. I came to church tonight with expectancy. I need God to move. And you can't distract my pastor. You can't mess up this atmosphere. You a lie. Poor like your pastor did I pushed a thousand member church all by myself me God and the Holy Ghost change the atmosphere in her ah you got to learn how to do war push from the spirit come on you got 30 more seconds and I'm gonna get you out of her oh my God push oh my God push come on woman of God stand up and push come on stand up woman of God come on stand on up and push come on up and push I don't know you I don't know what you need but push come on push are you pregnant mama you're pregnant with purpose
purpose. You're pregnant with destiny. You done had four or five kids. Push. Push out your spiritual baby. Push that depression up off of you. Push that anger up off of you. Get it up off of you. Oh, do you expect God to do it? Now, come on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I quit. If you expect that God to do something, come down to the altar. Come on. If you need God, expect the God to do something, come on down to the altar. Come on down to the altar. I'm going to leave it right there. I know how to obey God. What do you need God to do tonight? What are you expecting God to do? What do you need God to do? Oh my God, for you tonight, God is waiting. God is willing. God is able. Everything you think he can't do, he got the power to do. And you got to expect him to do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I quit because the Holy Ghost said, bring them down. Bring them down. God has said it. Unified expectancy. Unified expected. All the believers tonight is on one accord. We all standing and we all unified. Expecting and needing God. We position ourselves for God to do what he need to do. We trust God with all of our life. We trust God with our marriages. We trust God with our children. We trust God with our finances. Oh my God, it's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. Oh my, she can't all about change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere, Cornell. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Get the song, change my atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Come on, tell God to change the atmosphere in your home. You got the power to change the atmosphere on your job. You don't have to go to that job. It feel like hell. It feel like Vietnam on that job. You got the power when you walk in that job tomorrow for the atmosphere to shift. You bow your head and say shift. Oh, you said atmosphere to shift. Oh, speak to that atmosphere. Walk in your authority. Walk in your power. Oh my God, shift. Change the atmosphere. Oh my God, we expect you to move, God. We expect you to move, God. We expect you to move, God. Come on, don't get tired. Come on. You got the war. You got the war. Push. I'm going to get you out here. Push. Matter of fact, we're ahead of time. Don't let the natural time get you. Some of y'all are desperate for God to do something in your life and you can't patty-cake God. You got to cry. Push from the depth of your soul. Push till you lose your mind. Push till God break the chain. Push to God, break the yoke. Push to God, shift the atmosphere. You will know when he shifted because then you'll get a release. Then you'll have a flow. Then you'll have some power. Then you have some peace. Some of y'all right now need to get some peace in your mind. You need to shift your mind. Your mind is at war. Your mind is a battlefield. Oh, change the atmosphere. Oh, she came out of the little motion.